guys, what's going on? I've got uh, the wiring harness all done up the way I want it. I'm about ready to run all the uh, stuff that goes back through the firewall into the dash back through. Um, there's like a something on the camera there. Anyway, I want to show you how to wire the cluster. And you can actually do this completely without a wiring diagram, a schematic, a TM that tells you which wires go where. You don't need any of that shit. I'm going to show you why. So um, I'm just doing this out here like this because it's easier for me to work with the wires when they're not up in the dash. Okay. So what I've got here is a standard M35A2 cluster with all the gauges that are supposed to go in it. Uh... So let's start by flipping this over. When we flip it over, what we have is um, the spider harness. And we've got several gauges that draw power from the spider harness. And the only things that have to be hooked into them are the sending unit wires, okay? Because they work off of resistance to ground. So that being the fuel level gauge, the temperature sensor and the oil pressure gauge and I think this is yeah that's voltage so uh, that works through case ground to the cluster itself now if you've seen, you notice I've got an auxiliary grounding harness here that's kind of done a, it just connects to another bolt on the dash it helps keep a little better um, continuity on the gauge ground system anyway so down here if we follow it down we've got this is for our start button. We're going down here. Um, and these are all our cluster wires. These two here and these down here. So to start out, what do we have that's going to be the same? The only thing we've got here that's going to be repetitious are the illumination. You know, one light here, one light here. So you got two of them. Common sense dictates that those are both going to be the same number. So we look down here. We've got two, and these are male connections, so they have to be female that we're looking for. These two right here, both females, and are both numbered 40, as you can see. So that's our illumination. Cool. We've identified that. That's out of the way. Now we've only got a few more. Uh, these three are going to be um, for your gauges, different senders, right? These two are going to be for, um, one of them is going to be your cluster power uh, that goes to the spider because, as you see here, it's a male connector. And one of them is going to be for your high beam because, see here, it's a male connector. So, let's look at these three. What we have here is number 28, a number, get out of the way, turd. 33 and a number 36 so we know one of those is going to be the fuel tank the sender and one of them is going to be temperature engine temp one of them is going to be oil pressure so let's go over to where we know the oil pressure and the temperature sensors should be on the harness and we are we know they are because i showed you that the other day uh okay so what we've got here this leg we identified positively the other day as uh, 55 being the uh, flame heater and this one number focus number focus number 33 that's going to be your engine coolant temperature sensor so 33 over there we can plug in to um, the spot on the back of the coolant gauge or is it the other one yeah, it's transverse because the gauge is backwards no it's not i had it right temperature sensor there so you want to plug 33 right there now if we go back over here and go okay well we have the temperature sensor identified so got to get that out of the way now over here, we know that this is the trigger wire for the starter magnetic relay or solenoid, depending on how your truck is set up. And the only other small wire next to it is oil pressure. 
What's the number here? 36. Okay, so we go back over the cluster. And we look down here. And so we've got 33 and 36 identified. We know where that goes. So that means that number 28 here, focus you turd, number 28 here has to be, through process of elimination, um, the sender wire for the fuel level. So those three are identified. Now these two, um, let's see. I don't know if this actually has a number tag on it or not. It does, but I can't read it. It's um, too nasty and corroded and old and screwed up. Ah, wait. 27. You can just barely read that. So let's see if one of these is 27. What do we have here? Oh, we have a we have a 17 and we have oh, a 27. So we know that 27 needs to be plugged in to cluster power. <coughs> Excuse me. And since we know that this comes on with the master power switch to power all the gauges what we can do is we can run a three-way splitter off of this and um, run another power leg from that down to our pigtail for our transfer case front axle uh, engagement indicator lamp which is right here anyway so I mean you only need a short jumper for that and another couple of Packard connectors um, and 17, I mean, obviously, since it's still the only one, odd one out, we know that that goes to the high beam indicator. Um, but another little interesting thing um, is if you look at your three wires for high beam here, you have a 18 and a 17 and a 16. So 17 being part of the high beam uh, circuit and the headlight circuit, we are pretty sure that that's going to be high beam here so yeah uh i think that's about it damn that wasn't as hard to explain as i thought it was going to be uh the only other thing i could say is is it is a good idea even if you don't have like a ready-made harness just take some wire and some ends and make up uh make up your own jumper harness go from gauge to gauge to gauge that way you get a good clean ground circuit and then find a place on your dash to ground it because um, more often than not these clusters will not gauge their the will not ground to the dash very well and uh if you hello rifle mm, pretty thing you yeah um if you look at there it's painted right and it's painted all around and those inserts they just kind of sit there so it, if you did have any ground at all, it would be through fretting, and uh, that doesn't provide a very good ground, so um, just one simple small wire is all it takes. And you can do the same thing over at your fuel level sender. I'll kind of show you that. Um, since the fuel level senders are so horrendously uh, and unreliable on these, it's a good idea to do anyway. Um, and I'm not sure if you can read that, but... Nah. 28 yeah that's what plugged in there anyway uh i added a ground just to the body or the, to the frame there and then it worked for like a couple of days so then i added another ground from that straight to the ground post on the battery and it worked once again for a couple of days and now it hasn't worked in forever so yeah <laughs> Anyway, guys, um, like I said, do your best. Take your time. Use, use common sense. This is this really wasn't that hard. I hope you know this was kind of eye-opening for you. Show you, you know, watch this video for a few minutes, and you won't have to dig through the TMs to figure out what wire goes where, as long as all your number tags are still on there, um, or you know how to use a multimeter. If your tags are gone. You can still use a multimeter to find out what comes on when you do certain things, and then take into account the 
uh, the gender of your connectors and you'll be able to figure out where they go. So thanks for watching guys. I know you found this helpful. Like and subscribe and we'll see you next time.